بسم الله علي من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فراشهم Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh and welcome again to our discussion around the dua of uh, in Shah Ramadan which starts with Allahumma adkhil ala ahl al-qubur al-surur where inshallah we'll be going through line by line each of the verses if you like um, and going into a bit more depth behind each of them and we'll be leveraging the book uh, Manifestations of the All-Merciful by Shaykh Khalfan and as I've mentioned in the introduction, if you'd like to jump ahead and uh, read on, absolutely do so. It's there and available online for you to find. But inshallah, in this session, we will start with this first line, having completed our intro, which, as we know, is, as I've just mentioned, Allahumma adkhil ala ahl al qubur al surur O oh Allah, instill happiness in the spirits of the inhabitants of the grave. Inshallah, to begin our discussion on this, we will cover uh, another core principle, if you like, that we could have put into the introduction, but Sheikh Al-Fan actually puts it in this, in this part of the, of the book. Um, and this is a useful principle for us to remember, again, throughout the entirety of the book, but not just this, but actually in any dua that we recite, but in our lives generally, actually. So what is this, this principle? This is that... Dua is an amazing way and an amazing tool, if you like, that we've been given and taught these amazing du'as by the Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as um, It's an amazing tool for us to reach our legitimate du'as and desires. It points us every single time in the same direction. Look at any du'a that you'll recite in Shah Ramadan. Dua Joshin Kabir, Allahumma inni as Eluka Bismik. If you look at Dua if Tata, Allahumma inni aftati hufana abahamdik. If you look at this Dua, Allahumma ad khilala in Kuburis. If you look at the Dua that many of us know was as well, Ya Ali, you Ya Azim. It always starts with addressing a common entity, and that is, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In it. Any du'a that we find from Ahlul Bayt Alayhim it constantly points us into the same direction, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very important point to just soak in. I know you're probably thinking, okay, that's pretty obvious. It's important for it to soak in. It's obvious, but it's important for it to soak in. It's pointing us not just to Allah, but why Allah? Because Allah is the principal cause of Full stop. Anything that you see, when you trace back its cause, its cause, its cause, its cause, its cause, it goes back to the same principal cause, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our creed teaches us the principle of cause and effect, with God being the ultimate cause. And the following words of wisdom attributed to Imam Salih alayhi salam emphasizes this way. He says, Allah does not permit things to take place except by their causes. Thus, he made a cause for everything. This is in Bihar al -Nwar. And with this, therefore, we know that any legitimate desire, and of course this dua is full of, inshallah, legitimate desires, that with any legitimate desire that we have, it can only be granted by the principle cause and that is of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hence why every single time we start with Allahumma 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 but there is a balance and I think there's this common proverb and I, I'm worried maybe I've just made it up myself I'm pretty sure it's a common proverb which is that you should have faith in God but tie up your camel so of course raise your hands and dua ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your legitimate desires, but you also need to enact on it as well. You need to do something to make it a reality. You can't just say, you know, okay, cool, I want to uh, go for this new job and just do, you know, a quick du'a after Salat al-Fajr on that. Yeah, no, of course, you need to research which job, you need to prepare your CV, you need to reach out and apply, you need to go through the interviews and prepare accordingly and so forth and so forth. So we do our du'a in the morning, Maybe we've taken out sadaqah 
or something, we've done our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we've said, you know, Allah, you are the principal cause and if you believe this is good for me at this point in my time, then I know, at this point in my life, then I know you will grant it and I have absolute trust in that. So you start with that conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you ask and then you move on to tying your camel. Unfortunately, a lot of us would probably, and probably myself included more than anyone, would probably just go, okay, this is what I want. I'm just going to get cracking. And once I finish the steps, once I finish applying to the job, then I'm like, oh, and maybe now I should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we get it the wrong way around. We need to go to the principal cause first. Allahumma adkhil ala rasul. Allahumma adhni kulla faqir. Allahumma, Allahumma, and so forth. This is a very important point, again, that as I said, can be applied generally to uh, our aqa'id actually but also you know of course then when we look into our du'as that Allah is the principal cause and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single time so as we just said then what's the relevance of this to this line specifically of the du'a and now we've acknowledged that Allah is the source and Allah is the principal cause and we've also acknowledged that when we understand that we need to balance it with some sort of physical action. We can't just sit here in the star and say, and you'll see this is a common theme from Allah, but we can't just sit here and say, okay, Allah, instill happiness in those in the grave, done. That's my bit, finished. Feet out, relax, now I can have my fire and I can relax. No. We need to do something physical as well. We need to balance the act. And the question is therefore, what is the act? What is the things that we can do once we've said this du'a, to actually go about trying to instill happiness within the inhabitants of the grave. And there are a hadith about this, and just to give you a summary of them, because I guess the goal of this is for us to recognise just that main principle, and I'm sure the following that I'm, meant to, I'm about to say is not going to be a surprise to many of you, which is, of course, you can recite prayers for those who have passed away. It's a very recommended act. Um, you can do a du'a for them, you can seek forgiveness on behalf of them, you, that some of the a'mal also recommends doing Surah Al-Qadr seven times for them, reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas eleven times for them, praying for them, or doing prayers on behalf of them, fasting on behalf of them, of course you can do Hajj on behalf of them with conditions, uh, give Sadaqah, general good deeds, and you can give that thawab to those who have passed away. So the principle here is very Quite simple, actually, and inshallah, we'll, we'll go deeper as we go further through the book, inshallah, with Shaykh Al Khan, which is that look, make sure you understand that the principal cause in all of this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So pray for the instilling of the happiness of those in the grave, but also then let me couple it with some actions. Let me actually go out of my way, you know, the Shaykh Al and say, this chapter of Quran, or these 10 minutes I'm going to recite of Quran, I'm going to dedicate to the Amwat. I'm going to dedicate to those who have passed away, not just those who I know. Going back to our introduction, not just those who I know, but in fact those who I don't know as well. Because I want this to be all-encompassing so I can be more towards those divine attributes, inshallah, of that all-encompassing mercy. And just one last point that I'd like to make, and this is a personal observation. And occasionally I may add a personal observation in this, but I'll make it very clear because... I'm not a scholar or nothing at all. It's just an observation that I am making. And that is that I find it very interesting that in this du'a, in terms of how it's structured, it could have been in any order. But interestingly, it starts with not enriching the poor, not correcting the affairs of the Muslims or not uh, relieving those who have debt. But it starts with dhikr al It starts with the remembrance of death. And again... I think this is quite profound for us in this holy month. Whether this is the intention of it, I don't know. But something that I take away from this personally and from an observation perspective is that this is a month of yearning for forgiveness. In those nights of Qadr, look at those du'as on the side, how many times they actually point towards safety from Jahannam. And it's always about the Akhir, it's about... This cleansing of the soul, this cleansing of the soul to get closer to Allah, closer to Allah. And the ultimate goal, inshallah, is that we have a journey of mercy 
through to the next life, the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we don't receive his judgment. So if we receive his judgment, then we're going to be in a tough position. But this du'a starts with dhikr al Look at du'a Josh and Kabir. In the nights of Qadr, after you've done A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A'mal, and you're knackered, and then they say, okay, time for du'a Josh and Kabir. And you're like, whoa, this is going to be a tough one. It's like an hour and a bit. And you say all of these beautiful, all, all of these beautiful names and signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only to conclude each time to say khallisna min an-nar ya rab khallisna min an-nar ya rab save me from that fire O oh lord that is one of the biggest goals i think that we see in this holy month that we need to reflect on where we are that if we are to be taken at this given moment where is my destiny and from day one of Shah Ramadan to day 30 to the day of Eid, am I any more in a, am I in any more of a better place than I was at the beginning of the month? Because if not, maybe I've not treated this month how I should have. And I say this to myself a hundred times over before anyone else, a thousand times over before anyone else. And it's tricky because we can get so occupied with you know, oh, I'm hungry, I'm tired, work, this, that, if bad, blah, 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 meeting up with family, friends, ah, man. But actually, all of that is so valuable, but without correcting our souls, without me correcting my soul and redirecting it 100% towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then maybe it wasn't worth it. Maybe it's not worth it, but maybe I could have got more out of it. The du'a starts, Allahumma adkhil ala ahl al Perhaps as a stark reminder that by the end of watching this video, I could be ahl al That I could be amongst those who have passed and that next year, others are reciting this line of the du'a for me. Maybe I'm next on that list. Maybe in the nights of Qadr, Allah is writing that down for me. That this, you know what, Sadiq, this is, this is your end. This is your last year. This is your last shah Ramadan. And that's something for us to ponder on. Don't just treat this as a du'a that, you know, after your salah, you just say, Allah, No. Just take a step back. Remember what we said in the introduction, but also maybe just remember that first line. Oh, is this the last time I'm going to recite it? Maybe I'm on night one and I'm watching this, or night two, or night 29, whatever. And tomorrow I will be ahlil qubur. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I have no idea. But reflect on that. Reflect on that. It's just a personal observation that I think is quite vital. So to summarise the points to be mentioned on this line of the du'a, firstly that we looked at the principal cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we go through Allah and we end up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of any du'a that we recite and he is the principal cause. But once we've asked him first, we need to ensure that we balance that with some a'mal, some actions rather than just lip service. That means we truly... Believe it. And we said some of the things you can do, of course, is praying for those who have passed, offering salah on behalf of them, hajj with conditions, fast, siyam, etc., um, sadaqa, charity. And the third thing that came from myself, from a personal observation, if it's wrong, forgive me, um, but inshallah, if we can derive value, then it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is that we start the du'a by the remembrance of death. Not even life. We just start with the remembrance of death, and then everything else is about life and i think that's really profound especially in this holy month of ramadan so we end in a child if i can request you to recite a surah al-fatiha for all of those who are uh, who have passed into this next life and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them with elevated statuses with the ahlul bayt alayhim assalam wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh